guys, tonight I'm going to be checking out the haunted history and ghost stories of the Lizzie Borden bed and breakfast. I'm also staying in the murder room for the night all by myself. So keep watching and find out what happened on my experience here. On the morning of August 4th, 1892, this house in the sleepy town of Falls River, Massachusetts became the scene of a grotesque double murder that remains unsolved to this day. Two of the home's occupants were hacked to death with what is believed to be a hatchet. This event thrust the victim's daughter, Lizzie Borden, into murder suspect infamy. Abby Borden, Lizzie's stepmother, was the first victim. She was killed in the house's front room while making the bed Lizzie's uncle, John Morse, had slept in the night before. It's likely she knew her killer as she was initially struck face on in the left side of the head and showed no signs of putting up a fight. This initial blow stunned her, causing her to turn and fall onto her front. Her murderer then proceeded to continue hacking her in the back of the head. She was struck a total of 19 times. Around an hour and a half later, Andrew Borden, Lizzie's father, was murdered. He had returned from running errands early to take a nap on the downstairs family room couch before meeting John Morse for lunch. He died in his sleep after being hacked beyond recognition with the same hatchet that killed his wife, struck a total of 11 times in the head and face. Just after 11am, Lizzie discovered her father's lifeless body, calling out to the maid, known as Maggie, who was also napping upstairs. Shortly after, Abby Borden's body was discovered by Maggie and the next door neighbour. Lizzie Borden was a prime suspect in the murder investigation, yet found innocent by an all-male jury who couldn't fathom a woman of that day and age committing such an atrocious act. Today, popular belief holds Lizzie as a favourite suspect in the case. Her strange behaviour leading up to and after the murders, paired with her inconsistent testimonies and speculated lust for her father's wealth, add weight to the possibility of her involvement. Many other theories as to who the killer or killers were exist. Yet, we may never know the real truth of what happened that morning of August 4th, 1892. Today, the murder house still exists and functions as the Lizzie Borden bed and breakfast. True crime fans and lovers of the paranormal can spend the night in various rooms and explore the home's dark history through an in-depth tour included with the stay. The home also has many ghost stories to share. It is believed that Abby and Andrew Borden continue to haunt the place they once called home. Photographic evidence, EVPs and many eyewitness reports add credibility to this belief. Others have also claimed to cite the spirits of both Lizzie Borden and John Morse within the house. Although Abby and Andrew's murders are the most famous, they are not the only Borden murders to have occurred and not the only murdered spirits to roam the house. Years before these crimes were committed, Eliza Darling Borden lived in the house next door. Suffering from postpartum depression, she threw her three young children into the property's well and then committed suicide by slitting her own throat with a razor inside her house. One of the children managed to survive, the other two were not as lucky. It is believed that these children roam the upstairs bedrooms, which are the former maid quarters. Toys have been left out for these children, and it is not uncommon for visitors to see, hear, and sense them in the Borden house. A stay at the Lizzie Borden bed and breakfast also includes access to Ouija boards and dousing rods. I used these tools during my stay and recorded some interesting results. Is there anyone that wants to play with us? At this point, the dowsing rods begin to move to cross over one another. Can you cross the bars? What's your favourite toy? Can you use the rods to point to it? At this point, the dowsing rods begin to point towards a toy box that is just off screen. Is it in the toy box? Is this raccoon your favourite? Oops. <laughs> that just... This is the Ouija board at the Lizzie Borden house. 
Yeah. Is there anyone here that wants to communicate with us? Is anyone moving it? No. <laughs> oh my god. Shh, calm down. Interestingly here, the planchette moves directly off the board towards the prop hatchet we have on the ground. It's going toward the air. It's not supposed to go. Are there any spirits that would like to communicate to us? Here, the planchette moves to point to yes. Who is it we're talking with? A. Abby? Did you used to live here? Again, the planchette moves to yes. Are we welcome to stay in your house tonight? After asking this question, the planchette moves to Z and then O. Then our session is cut short by one of the members who fears the demon Zozo is trying to communicate with us. No, nope. say goodbye. Say goodbye. Goodbye. Uh, goodbye. It wants to see. Our tour guide then re enters the room and warns us against playing that particular Ouija board. I, th I saw why. Stop no. playing that. <laughs> Every time people use that board, that's the only thing that comes up on it. Zozo? Yep. Seriously. Well, I don't play with it. T, what's your favourite colour? We then moved our session into the dining room where we believed we were communicating with a spirit known only to us as T. Is it blue? That's my favourite colour. T, are you from Falls, Riv Falls River? Mm -hmm. Do you like it here? Are you a little kid? Like, under the age of 10? Is the raccoon your favourite toy? Did we talk to you earlier? Are there other children up there that you play with? Are you related to the other children that you play with? Are you the neighbour kids? Were you stuck in the well? Killed. Or killed in the well? Are you happy being here? Can you spell your favourite toy? The board then proceeds to spell out chair. Is this a chair with your toys on it? Were we communicating with the spirits of children inside the house? Did Zozo try to make contact with us? Do you have theories as to who murdered the Bordens? Would you spend the night alone at the Lizzie Borden house? Let me know in the comments below. Well guys, I survived a night inside the murder room of the Lizzie Borden bed and breakfast. I cannot recommend this place enough. It is fantastic. If you did enjoy this video though, please don't forget to like, comment and subscribe. And hopefully I'll see you again really soon.